Hey, a little bit more uh, dollhouse time for us together. Do you like my new um, slide here? I got bored of what I was doing before, and so I had to have some pretty colors. They don't really last that long, the pretty colors, but I thought it'd be fun for, for now. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit more about a dollhouse now that you have read the rest of the play. In particular, I want you to think about the play's relationship to melodrama. As I said, people who would have watched this play in its original you know, productions in the late 19th century would have been immersed culturally in melodrama. That would have been their main kind of play that they saw. And so it's natural to think that when they sit down to watch Ibsen's play, even though they know it's Ibsen, their, their sort of um, storytelling uh, receptors are tuned to melodrama. So the play is, I would argue, um, operating on that assumption. And it is inviting the audience to read melodramatic traditions into certain aspects of the characters and plot, only to then be sort of surprised, slash shocked, slash disappointed, slash excited about what happens in the play. Here's what I mean, okay. Uh, we have somebody who you could call a hero. Who would be the hero of the play? Right, it's Torvald, it's not Nora, right? Because for a 19th century melodrama, um, we're gonna see Torvald kind of like George in Octoroon as the he hero stereotype, right? So uh, Torvald would be our stock character hero, and he fits a lot of things, right? He's not terrible, he's not perfect, but the right is on his side, and he has things he wants to accomplish, etc. And he is thwarted by Krogstat, who is our villain type, who has something that he can hold over um, the hero, Torvald, which is this thing that his wife has done so that he can get what he wants, which is a job. And like a good melodramatic sort of he, uh, villain, Torvald is not ultimate evil, but he's also not perfect, and we start to understand him. So, I mean, if you really wanted to, as a 19th century audience, you could, you could find familiar stereotypes of, of stock characters happening here. We have um, uh, innocent children, and we even have a fallen woman, right? Now, Nora is not a fallen woman in a sexual way, which is the traditional way we think of a fallen woman, but she has sinned, she has erred, she has broken the law. And what happens to fallen women in melodrama? Right, they die. So. This is why we get all these hints in the play that Nora's gonna kill herself, because it's, it's teasing our expectations that a woman who breaks a rule will die. And they're letting us think that, the play is letting us think that, because it, it, it knows we want to assume this about a fallen woman character, but it's not what's gonna happen. We even get intrigue, right? All oh, that letter business, I have a letter, I put the letter in the box. Who's been tinkering with the box? Someone tried to get the letter. Should we take the letter out? I've read the letter. All that letter business is straight out of melodrama, right? We know that. We even have spectacle. We don't have trains and horses and buildings falling down, but the uh, detailed interior is a kind of spectacle, a lot of emphasis on real stuff on stage. The real place of spectacle, oh, you could say the Christmas tree is spectacle, but, but the real place of spectacle in the play is Nora dancing the Tarantella, right? It's got this sort of historic milieu thing because it's a um, cultural milieu, not historic, because it's this exotic folk dance from Italy and she wears the costume and she dances on stage and it's uh, sort of exotic and exciting. That's spectacle. P.S. Did you look up anything about the Tarantella? Yeah, the Tarantella is a Sicilian, Italian, Southern Italian folk dance and music. Maybe if you ever took piano, you learned to play a Tarantella. And the, the mythology of the Tarantella, Tarantella means tarantula. And the idea is that it's a frenetic dance that one does because they've been bitten by a tarantula and they have to dance frantically to get the poison out before it kills them. Ah, this is what Nora dances on stage. You get it? She's got a poison in her and she's gonna dance so she doesn't kill her. All of this would play into our expectations as 19th century audience members. And we would think she's gonna die because she's fallen, but then she doesn't. So it's a melodrama setup with a realistic gut punch, right? Just at the moment where Nora 
should, um, if it was a melodrama, go off and kill herself or something in order to save the shame of Torvald, who is the man and the hero, so he must survive this but be really sad when he realizes what she did for him. All that would work in a melodrama. But instead of that happening, Nora is mad, upset, disappointed that Torvald doesn't sacrifice himself for her before she can sacrifice herself for him. That's the thing she thought he would do. That would be melodramatic also. And instead of killing herself, she says, sit down, we have to talk. Oh, that doesn't usually happen in a play, right? Not in 1879. So it's a setup of a melodrama, lots of familiar tropes, and then the gut punch of realism. That's the relationship I see in this play to melodrama. Oh, just I have to say heredity and environment one more time, right? And this is that picture that I wanted to show on the last thing, but I went by it too fast. Did you think more about heredity and environment in the play? Did you think more about how the play keeps trying to demonstrate to us that people do what they do because of their environment, the way they were raised, the family systems they grew up in? Environment means society, it means school, it means church, it means home. Heredity means your, your bloodline, but also your, your family and the, way, the things that have shaped you socially and sociologically. The play is saying these are the things that shape human behavior. And if you want different human behavior, you need to change heredity and environment. That's realism. It has a scientific interest for its period and it has social, political, sociological interests for the period.